Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. More than 50 years into the Israeli occupation of Palestine, Israel has arrested over 1,200 Palestinians in June and July of this year alone, the highest rate in years. According to human rights groups like Amnesty International, Israeli forces also unlawfully killed Palestinian civilians, including children in both Israel and the occupied territories, and detained thousands of Palestinians who oppose Israel's continuing and growing military occupation without trial. Sheer Hever is a researcher for The Real News Network. Thank you so much for joining us to discuss this, Sheer. Can you tell us, can you tell us, um, can you go over these numbers with us over the past two years? Who is being arrested? We know the number includes hundreds of children. Um, and is it true that most of these arrests are happening in East Jerusalem? Uh, right. So uh, what we're seeing now is a very uh, rapid increase in the rate of arrests. So in the month of June, uh, there were almost 400 people being arrested. And in the month of July, uh, which is very alarming, 880 people were arrested, among them 144 children. So right now uh, we have 6,128 Palestinian political prisoners in Israeli jails. This is uh, Palestinians from the occupied territory, not including Palestinians who are citizens of Israel uh, and people who are arrested for, for regular crimes. These are specifically those who are known by the Israeli authority as uh, um, security prisoners, which, which means political prisoners. And 450 of them are uh, just administer, administrative detainees. That means that they have not had any charges pressed against them. They didn't uh, they don't go to trial, they don't uh, uh, get the very basic right, uh, right to defend themselves, and they just wait uh, until the Israeli uh, um, officials will decide to let them go. Uh, now, if we're looking at that in a little bit of a broader perspective, if we just look about three years ago, there were about 4,000 Palestinian political prisoners. So the number has increased by about 50% uh, in, in the last three years. And uh, also when we're talking about the administrative detainees, it was around 200 and now it's 450. So that's over a hundred percent increase. Uh, and I think this is a really, really a change of policy on the Israeli side. And you've also asked about East Jerusalem. This is of course within the context of the mass uh, protests around the Al-Aqsa Mosque in East Jerusalem. Uh, and uh, in the course of these protests in an attempt to crush the protests, uh, about half of the people arrested in July uh, were uh, arrested in East Jerusalem, so about 450 people. And uh, talk to us about why um, Palestinians were protesting um, at the Alaska Mosque, which really helped, as you said, set off this uh, increased rate of arrests. Yeah, well, uh, the Alaska Mosque is an area of constant provocation. There are extreme right-wing groups, uh, Israeli groups, trying uh, to call for a demolition of the Alaska Mosque in order to build a third uh, Jewish temple on its ruins. Most Israelis are opposed to that. But the current Israeli government is actually allowing this extremist group more and more access to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, and that uh, causes a lot of concern. And so there was actually an attack by uh, three Palestinians from Um al Pachem, which is a town inside Israel. They killed three Israeli police in the occupied Al-Aqsa uh, compound. Uh, and they were killed themselves. And after that, uh, uh, the Israeli government uh, imposed uh, severe restrictions, uh, put cameras as well as metal detectors. That was considered completely uh, not legitimate and a, and a violation of the status quo in that area. Uh, so a sort of show of force and a show of sovereignty by the Israeli government in an occupied territory. And that caused a lot of international uproar and also uh, a boycott by Palestinian uh, Muslims who decided not to pray in the Al-Aqsa Mosque until those measures are removed, and, there, and, and instead they prayed around the mosque. And those protests were very effective. In the end, the Israeli government was able to, to stave off the international pressure, but they were not able to get the, the, pray, the, the believers themselves, the Palestinian believers themselves, to give up their struggle until they removed both the metal detectors and the cameras. So Shinbet has been boasting they're using a new computer algorithm which scans social media and identifies potential terrorists so they can be arrested before they're even committed a crime, a thought crime essentially. Um, there are reports that between 400 and 800 Palestinians have already been arrested because this algorithm selected them. 
Talk about the impact of this on the lives of Palestinians and their social media activity. Yeah, if we, if we uh, correlate the information coming from the Israeli secret police and the information coming from the Palestinian prisoner organizations like Adamir, uh, we see that actually the majority of Palestinians who were arrested in the month of July were arrested based on this algorithm. They were preemptively arrested. And that's something which is really unprecedented. It's a way, uh, it allows some kind of AI to uh, pick people based on their behavior on social media. And then the Israeli secret police arrest that person without a warrant. They don't need one. Uh, and they just say, uh, we have reasons to believe that that person may intend to commit a crime in the future. Now, we don't know exactly what is in this algorithm. It's, of course, secret. But uh, it seems to be uh, tracking things like people changing their profile picture or people using farewell words in their posts on Facebook, for example, if they say goodbye to their friends then the Israeli secret police believes that maybe they are uh, saying goodbye because they're about to commit suicide as part of a suicide attack. And, and actually, there's a, a Palestinian poet. Her name is uh, Doreen Tatur. She's currently on trial because she published a poem. In the poem, she was uh, praising Palestinians resisting the occupation. But the poem is actually not the reason that, that the Israeli secret police uh, uh, found her and decided to arrest her because um, they don't really read Palestinian poetry. That's not uh, what interests them. Instead, after writing the poem, she uh, concluded her post on Facebook by saying, I am the next Shaheed. Now, the word Shaheed in Arabic literally means witness. But in a religious context, it means a martyr, somebody who dies. And in their death, they uh, perform some kind of testimony to the cruelty of the Israeli occupation and so on. But a lot of Israelis understand the word Shaheed as a suicide bomber, somebody who um, uh, dies and in the process of dying uh, commits an attack. So because she used that word and because the Israeli secret police and also the Israeli court and the Israeli police don't have a, a very good understanding of the Arabic language and the, Arab, and, and the Muslim culture, they've arrested her and put her on trial based on her poem. So you mentioned thought crime. I don't think you can get more than that uh, when you're talking about thought crime. And finally, Sheer, what role has the Palestinian Authority played in all of this? Because especially over the last two, two and a half decades of the Israeli occupation, the, the settlements have expanded greatly. And it seems like the Palestinian Authority is unable to stop them, uh, they're unable to stop the arrests, the arbitrary arrests and detention and killing of uh, Palestinian civilians and those that are resisting the occupation. Where do they stand in this? They've said they're going to stop security cooperation with, with uh, Israel. But uh, what does this really mean for, for the Palestinian people? The Palestinian Authority plays a very important role when it comes to the prison uh, industry, the prison system of uh, Palestinian political prisoners. Uh, we're now talking about 6,000 Palestinian uh, political prisoners in Israeli jail, 4,000 just three years ago. But if you go a little bit way back, uh, to the uh, years before the Palestinian Authority was established, the, the years of the first Intifada, there were 11,000 Palestinian political prisoners in Israeli jails. What happened? What happened is that the Palestinian Authority started to build its own jails. And the Israeli government would give the Palestinian Authority instructions and say, we suspect these people of po possibly being members of the Hamas party or possibly being uh, planning some kind of attack or, or uh, some kind of protest. So why don't you arrest them? And so the Palestinian Authority actually collaborated with that and arrested thousands of Palestinians and kept them in Palestinian jails. Uh, and most recently, there's been a report uh, published by uh, Amnesty International, but also by a lot of Palestinian human rights organizations, saying the Palestinian Authority is now in the habit uh, of arresting Palestinian journalists who are criticizing the government. So they're using those prisons also to cement their own power. The Palestinian um, Authority... Uh, it started to, to chafe under the, the Israeli regulations, especially with this all, uh, this summer with the Al-Aqsa uh, struggle and the, and the protests and so on. And President Mahmoud Abbas said uh, they're going to stop the security cooperation with Israel. And this, of course, immediately leads to more arrests by the Israeli forces because they cannot count on Palestinians to arrest people on their behalf. But uh, just uh, uh, today, it was reported that a senior Israeli um, security official told Israeli journalist uh, Shlomi Elda from uh, the Al Monitor magazine that uh, the Palestinian Authority decided to resume 
Security Corporation of Israel. So that was a statement that was made by President Mahmoud Abbas to stop the cooperation, but he is now uh, apparently uh, quietly and under the table resuming the security cooperation because actually without it, the Palestinian Authority plays no important role uh, for, for the Israeli government, and then the Israeli government has no incentive to let it continue to exist. Um, now, I think there's also an interesting aspect to this because of the U.S. involvement. Because uh, uh, Tillerson, uh, Secretary of State Tillerson, is completely accepting the Israeli talking points uh, about how the Palestinian Authority is actually fi financing terrorism because they're financially supporting the families of Palestinian prisoners. And he's putting a lot of pressure on the Palestinian Authority to stop doing that. In fact, there's now a bill that was approved by Senate, not, not voted on yet, but it approved for a vote, uh, to revoke funding from the Palestinian Authority unless it stops and funding the families of prisoners. What and I so, think, uh, and so, finally, Sheer, um, what are, what is talk about what the Palestinian uh, civil society is demanding in response to this, especially from Americans that are largely subsidizing the Israeli occupation. Uh, we know there's a bill being considered that would criminalize um, support for the the boycott, divestment, sanction movement. Um, what is Palestinian civil society calling for today? The more uh, the cooperation between the Palestinian Authority and the Israeli government becomes more apparent, the more the Palestinians turn to alternatives. Uh, I think most Palestinian civil society organizations and the vast majority of the Palestinian public on the ground are furious with both the Fatah party and the Hamas party. They don't consider them to be their representatives. And so they go for a kind of civil disobedience model and trying to promote uh, uh, various forms of protest, which require international solidarity. So you mentioned the boycott, divestment, sanctions uh, uh, movement. This is what they are actually asking from the world. Um, almost all Palestinians support this movement and see it as a ray of hope uh, that with international support, uh, they could uh, put more pressure on the Israeli government to respect their rights, to respect their dignity, and to treat them as human beings. All right, Sheer Hever, thank you so much for joining us on The Real News. Thank you, Jason. And to our viewers, thank you so much for joining us.